Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Welcome back. So this is the Python for data anal uh, analysis. So we're gonna continue to the chapter four, like uh, start from the Boolean indexing. So as you can see here, so Boolean indexing is a uh, very kind of a simple. So just as you can see in this example here, and then let's say about the, we're gonna set up the name of the name as an array here. And then also we assuming that we also get the data in here. And then as you can see here, name also has the seven, uh, uh, seven data, like uh, seven elements. And then this one is also the seven elements, which is the same. So in that case, we have a we have a this name array, and also we have a these seven, uh, seven elements of the data, right? Yeah. In this case, maybe if we can say about the name equals Bob, we will have a, this kind of a boolean result, like a true or false, right? So. If, like a first one is the Bob, so which is the true, and then a Joe mm -hmm. is not Bob, so which is the false, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. So by using the this kind of a boolean outcome, right, we can also also apply the this boolean outcome. Try to when we try to uh, extract the uh, data array by using the this boolean result of the uh, boolean result in names. Okay, so that means. We actually try to using the this name, what is called the this name array, as a kind of a indexing, right? That's the how you think. We actually try to exactly assign to uh, assign to the these things, but when the same, if we have if both name and data array has the same number of elements, like a number of rows, and then. If that's the case, maybe if we 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 can use the this name, uh, like a like a indexing, okay. That's the how it works, like here. So, when we can have a name, this one gonna be the, this gonna be give us about the boolean. Uh, boolean result, and then that boolean result gonna be. Uh, gonna be transferred into the that data array to extract the data, okay? And then this one is uh, what this one says is uh, like uh, we gonna I'm gonna try to use uh, when the that that result comes up from uh from the here like uh like a four point seven and zero point zero, right? Yeah. Uh, four point seven and zero point zero, and then what this one means is, uh, among to the these two elements, we only need we only wanted to extract the data with the index number one, which is the this one, right? That's the thing we has to have uh, this result like a seven or zero as a single elements, right? And then uh, also output gonna be the array. And then same thing for the, if we have uh, this one, in this case, this is a little bit different because this one, in this case, we actually have a maker array by using the this only one single one, single element from the data. So that means we only have a one elements combined with the, that indexing number result, okay? Which is the quite quite interesting, right? It is what they call the even mix and match kind of uh, elements, boolean result, as a one single elements of the array in this case. Okay. Yeah. And then we also try to uh try to what is called the negate like a reverse to the condition by using the this symbol like this symbol. And then or this one. This one is also the same meaning of but the not equal, right? Hmm. Yeah. So name yeah, is, is not equal like, to uh, R. Yeah. I mean it's, it's also the same in, in R. Like yeah. Yeah, right. It's the same yeah. in R. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's the same I'm, thing, like uh, yeah, in, but in I'm not sure if the, if the if the like the the this other symbol is used in R. The the last mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that one is used, like the the slanted S. I don't think mm -hmm. that is used in R as negate. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So these are the kind of uh, their uh, some of the logic for the not equal mm -hmm. or reverse the condition. So. So these are the these two the boolean revert uh, result, and then that boolean result can be used to ex extract the, this data set right data outcome. So it's the same. So also maybe we can also have a, okay we have a, this boolean outcome as a condition variable, right? Yeah. And then we actually using this variable as a condition, right? to extract the data and then it, equals, it also has the same result. Okay. And then and then also and and or we can also use the these two. And then we actually have uh, in this case names equals Bob and then names equals Ryu. And then just make sure that the, these are the actually kind of a, a two pools, right? Two pools outcome in here. To put case and then those are they actually combined here as an array and then that also going to be used to the extract the data as a boolean outcome okay which is the quite convenient and then the quite interesting things uh in uh, in the python it is a little bit dif different from the r right so oh. that's the kind of thing and also we also try to uh try to manipulate the that data set like a Data equal uh, zero, which is the negative, and then uh, if every every elements who uh, or the element uh, the, the the elements who uh, that has uh, less than zero, we all changing into the zero, like uh, updating yeah, yeah. the substituting yeah. the values, right? Mm. And then we get the uh, this kind of result. So every uh every negative value gonna be changed into the uh, no, changing no. into the zero in this case, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And also, everything we have a uh, not draw equals seven. No. So in that case, we also have we also see that every uh every array elements who is not the draw actually changing into the seven, right? Yeah, this At seems very similar to me, like in uh, like yeah. some like uh. Tidy vice, tidy vice stuff in R. It's very similar. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. very similar. It yeah. is very similar to the tidy vice kind of approaches and also base yeah. R kind of approaches. Mm. Yeah, because uh, it actually kind of a very good extension kind of uh, approaches mm -hmm. when we try to manipulating or extract the data set by using the some of the other indexing or bullet outcomes. So, yeah, which is very interesting. And then another thing about the fancy indexing, it is actually what is called like a fancy indexing. It's just kind of a using describing the indexing using the integer array. So it is also the same. So you can see here, like uh, assuming that we have uh, this kind of a zero, uh, this kind of a uh, uh, eight row and four column of zero, which means like a eight row, which is a zero, zero, zero. This is a eight rows mm. and then zero, 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 right? Mm. Like this. So eight, uh, eight row and four column, mm. right? No. Mm. Yeah. And then we can also have a four equal R in the range in the eight is the Zero, one, two, and seven, and then all elements gonna be filled with like this, based on the law. This is the law, law indexing, right? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, right. Yeah, this is the this is the, what's the result to look like, and mm -hmm. then what's the fancy outcome is uh, just kind of a try to rearranging to the dead array outcome like a. Fourth, uh, fourth war, uh, fourth law gonna be indexing a uh, row with the indexing number four is come first, and then second and third 
and fourth row. So that means this one is actually this, and then a six is going to be the, at the bottom, like a fourth row. Just kind of a rearranging, you know, the sort of rearranging the, the particular order based by using the that indexing number. Same mm -hmm. thing gonna be applied to the same like a negative one, which is the negative one is maybe this is uh, my negative one, two, negative three, which is the five, right? And then mm -hmm. a negative five is this one, right? When we when we try to counting from the bottom to the up, right? And then negative seven is the uh it the first row, like a uh, like a, uh, not the first one, like a minus seven here, the one, okay? Yeah. That's the how it works. And then same thing gonna be happen in this case. So we assuming that we have uh, this arranged to the 32, to the to the eight, point, uh, eight row and four column look, look like this, right? And then when we say about the arranging of the this one five seven two as a row, and then uh this one is actually column index. So first uh first uh, vector list is actually row index, and the second one is the column index. So we can actually using this one is uh, as a pair pair of a uh, uh, location of elements within within an array right so what does that means is elements number is 1.0 5.3 and then 2.2 .2 gonna be show up so 1.0 is this one is the low number zero right and then one two Etc. and seven, and this is also one, two, three, three, one, one, two, three as a low number. And then one point zero is this is the low number one, index number one, and then a zero is the four. This is the what four come from here. Okay, mm. twenty three yeah. is a five point three is a, this one is five fifth row here, and then three is. 0, 1, 2, 3. So hit this one. Right? Mm. That's the how it works. Like a like a low index and then a column index. Yeah. The first yeah. first vector list is the low index number, and then a second one is the column index, and then a, it actually works as a pair, corresponding pair, pair of the location of the elements. That's the how it works. Mm. And then it's also the same thing in here. Right? That's the how we can try to do. Like uh, in this case, in in here, this one is uh, all the kind of uh, everything in there, and then it just try to rearranging to the array here. This is the result. So, and then and then also the same uh uh same thing can be new variable can be also modified like a like a this like this and then all of the this pair of the this row gonna be the set up a zero like this mm, yeah, yeah this one right yeah. yeah any question is this is a very interesting uh and also a little bit complicated to figure out but once you understand it maybe you will have a lot of a good skill set to manipulating the your data set and also how you can extract the data set by using the these kind of a techniques okay yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know i don't know okay so this, this might be when you're like when when you're working with a large data set i don't know how you yeah, like right, when, when you have right. like million uh, like a, yeah. a more than a 1 mil, 1 million observation how will you yeah, I don't maybe know. how you can yeah maybe how you can try to extract the some very specific block of the data set in the dead large array. In that case, mm -hmm. maybe this is gonna be the very helpful. Yeah, so 
And then the next one is how we can transpose in array and swapping axis. So this is a, just kind of a rotating the that array, like a, as a as when look like a, we can try to rotating the uh rotating the matrices, right? Mm -hmm. So thinking about the this one is the kind of a matrix. And then what the transpose like a dot t actually does is we're gonna try to uh uh try to uh try to ex uh, try to rotate like this rotate the rotating the this array and then writing down like this right yeah, yeah like changing the so row and the column row and yeah column and row are gonna be the reversed right yeah. yeah from this to this and then also the same thing as you can see here i actually had in in this case so when i if we have a, this kind of a array and then an mp dot to the orange two and ar what does this means is a a r r t this one is actually transpose outcome of this which is this right mm -hmm. so that means um uh, 3.5 metric array going to be created by using the transpose. And then the ARR is the existing one, like a pi 4 in 3. And then MP dot means we're going to try to combine, like a, try to combine these two matrices. If in um, this yeah. case, maybe you already know about the, this matrices algebra, right? Yeah, 3.5. Yeah. With uh, dot by five point three is actually producing yeah. the three by three square matrices, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's the how it works. Like uh, this one multiply by this one with the each elements, and then some of that gonna be the first elements of the three by three, and then yeah. this one is the second elements, right? And this one, and this one is the third elements. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. And then these kind of things going to be show up, right? Three by three square. This is the result for this, right? Yeah. And yeah. also by, instead of the using the MP dot, also we can use in the, this at, at, uh, operator to the mm -hmm. matrix multiplication, right? So mm -hmm. that's the kind of things. And also, also there is another thing we can do is the swap axis function. What is called the geo point one. What does that mean is we're gonna try to transposing with some specific axis. Like uh, geo point one is uh, zero here. And one is this. So based on this, we're gonna try to swap in out to the uh to the uh, uh to the axis like uh, like this. Like how I can say that how try to rotating rotating all of the elements based on the this specific location. That's the reason why we have uh, this number, and then. We have uh, this number, and then based on that, it's gonna be rotating like this, based on the this number as a as a center. Okay. Yeah. So now we talk about the what is called the pseudo random number generation, which is the uh, it's a kind of a what is called a, we actually have a in R. It actually about the n uh maybe uh maybe it is actually about the kind of a r norm function in r because uh, based on the standardized normal distributions we're gonna try to get the random number that's the how how this one is about right so yes. it is also the same thing in here. MP random has the kind of a kind of a function, and then 
we can actually try to uh, extract the dead random land number from the this standard normal distribution. And then we can try to, because this is actually MP NumPy array outcome. So we can also try to make a size, like an array size by the 4.4. And then that actually gives us about the, this random number event, which is the mean is zero and standard deviation is one. Okay. Mm, That's yeah. the how random number going to be come up. Mm. And also Python built-in random module. And then uh, it's a uh, kind of only one values at a time. And then maybe if you can see this is actually try to compare it about the how convenient about the using the NumPy uh numpy packages to extract uh, about the one million random number of the uh random number from, from the that standard normal distribution function maybe just this first one is uh calling the that million num random number by using the uh, ba uh basic python python module and then this one is actually using the numpy which means NumPy is a much faster, right? That's the how this one is about, okay? And yeah. then now we can actually have that, uh, what is called the seed function, which is the every time we're gonna try to, without without the seed number, we can, we always have a random, different random num number gonna be come up. But we try to make a fix the that random number extract about the, some specific, uh, seed uh, generating uh, pattern, we actually try to set up the what is called the this seed number. Just whatever number you like, we just uh, set up the this seed number. And then by using the this seed number, we can always get the same standard, same uh, same random number from the that normal distribution. It is yeah. also the same thing about the seed, uh, seed function in R, right? Yeah, yeah. Whenever yeah. we have a randomized kind of a approaches or some of the stochastic uh statistic outcome, we always looking at the, this kind of a seed number, especially for the like, some of the machine learning kind of kind of algorithm when we try to code in the those one. And then uh, if the that statistical analysis or machine learning technique include about the random outcome or random inputs, we always using the this kind of a seed outcome or uh, seed uh patterns to fix the that random number for our analysis so that's the kind of thing okay and then also here is another thing is the kind of uh, how we can try to uh try to type the uh, what is the type of the numpy random generator and generator things so these are the kind of a random generator It's the second second element. And then the third element is the, the that uh, some of the generator from the that random generator, which is the permutation or uniform or integers or standard normal, binomial, et cetera. Okay. Uh, Chi-square mm -hmm. or gamma outcome. So all of the, these things is an uh, example about the generator. So, so that by using the, those kind of a generator options that allow uh, that actually those generators allows us to uh, extract uh, some of the pseudo random numbers in from the that uh, from the that different kind of methodology. Okay. Yeah, I, I think this is this is very useful, especially if you're doing some analysis. You could easily uh, um, um, randomize number. Yeah, yeah. Randomize number. Yeah. Yeah, you can use it to do some uh, um, to generate yeah, some, some, some example some, things. Yeah, yeah, it's useful. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And then four point three actually about the universal functions like a faster elements and what elements wise or array, array function, which is the like a there is there is actually simple elements wise transformation about the transformation of the number. Of, numbers within the array, like a square or exponential kind of things. This is what is called the uniform universal function. That means 
the only simply type of the this function and and the array with the array uh that array uh, value gonna be transformed automatically by using the, this kind of a function like uh, generator functions so for example in here if we have uh, this kind of uh, array outcome and then if we can square root for that that means every every element is going to be squared rooted and then give us it give us kind of a result right like here to three and then exponential also the same thing like uh, this one is uh, exponential zero exponential one exponential two etc right power by two etc okay this is actually referred as a kind of a unit unit u functions and also also numpy add or numpy maximum take a two arrays and then return to the single array so whenever we have a, this kind of a two random standard normal kind of a outcome and then when we try to maximum x y and y that means each element's going to be compared and then try to only maximum only bigger number going to be uh, uh, uh stays uh, keep kept oh. in this case right yeah yeah and also another thing is uh, like uh, multiplication means so we have a single normal distribution in here and then multiply by five and then we have a uh, this outcome and then a uh, remainder and then the whole part is the multiplication which means remainder is the kind of a remainder of the now uh, uh, outcome and then the whole part is the sum of the integer right and then the whole remainder is the just kind of a decimal, decimal uh values less than the decimal value in here. And is it like for, the, mod, the, right? the the modula, the modular operator. Yeah, it is a just try to split the split the remainder, which is uh which is the let of uh, uh, under the decimal value, and then also keep the keep the integer value separately. Mm. Yeah. And then and then also we also try to do the same thing about the name zeros like and then uh, out is out like uh, try to do the uh, setting up the some data types. And then we actually have uh, some of the data going to be assigned by using the this add function to the one. Add is one is the each element's gonna be adding by one here, like this. Mm. Yeah. And then out is out means zero right in ARR means we don't we just try to uh try to setting up the data type in this case. Okay. Yeah. So these are the kind of example about the absolute value and square root. And then some of the modifications and uh, uh some infinite value gonna be modified or exponential, etc. And floor or maximum and minimum, and and logical not or something. So you just feel free to reading this, and also some binary universal function is if we take the two array. Two arrays we can use the add, subtract, minimum, maximum multiplications, etc. Okay, mm. so which is quite interesting. And then, do you have any questions so far? Anything? No, I think it's fine. fine. Okay. Okay, four point four actually about the array oriented programming with the array. So that means we're gonna try to a little bit more advanced data uh, manipulation, which is the, what they call the broadcasting, like a powerful method for the vectorizing the computation things. Like uh, some of the writing, instead of the writing roof, we're gonna try to do the more simple approaches to automatically updating or manipulating the, this data set by using the some of the oriented programming part, like a broadcasting things, like here. So let's talk about this example. So arrange in here, we're gonna have a neg negative five and 
uh, five until uh, enter the interval going to be 0 0.01, which is the 100 equally paid points. And then when we try to creating the this mesh grid, which is the point and point, that means 100 by 100 point of the mesh grid, like a grid in a, like a, like a matrix, a square matrix gonna be created, look like this. So this is actually 100 column and 100 rows, right? And then when we try to do the axis and y's, but powered by two, and then and then we can square root that one. These are the 100 by 100 matrices outcome. Okay. Mm, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. And also we can also try to visualizing these kind of things like a like a matplot library, which is the pyplot uh, as a PLT. Yeah. And then we're gonna try to show about the Z as a kind of things, and then I'll try to square root of this gonna be this kind of a circular kind of a less train images and then you will see the every very small single element is gonna be the, yeah. uh, gonna be the value of the grid like a last mm. image okay mm. yeah some of the mathematical kind of approaches to the this uh kind of a very single cell single cell each single cell has the this x x square by plus y square root root square root mm -hmm. has the value of the those outcome and then uh these data set actually kind of uh kind of a uh, uh like a uh, uh symmetry between uh not the not this like a symmetry to the x and y okay due to the this kind of a mass grid kind of outcome here this one is actually root. Yeah, x zero plus y zero. And then our this one is actually have uh, this kind of a square. All of the square outcome. Like like this. And then calculating by uh by the number. And then and then the all those center in uh, uh Converting to the when you go when you're looking at the this center value is a very small value, and then the light gray actually have a largest value in here, right? So that's it. And then also expressing the conditional logic to the array operation, which is the these things like uh, in here we have a five same array and then uh, we have uh, this kind of a condition set up and then if we're gonna extract the x c um uh, if the c is the kind of a uh, kind of a outcome and then the else is the y and then we're gonna try to fold x y and c and then Jeep is kind of a just kind of a try to making a pair of the pair of the outcome for the x array, y array, and condition. So this is the x and y and c. And then first one is 1.1 and then a y equal to if uh y uh y equal no no y equal 2.1 yeah. and then a c equal true. In that case, we're gonna keep this x value, right? Keep x, right? Mm. And then, and then second one is the 1.2 and y is a 2.2, c is false, right? If the false, else is y, right? So we're gonna keep this one. That's the how it works, okay? This one is just kind of expressing conditional kind of a logic. 
to extract the sum of the array functions with the more kind of a we're gonna try to set up the our own multi own condition and then those our own customizing condition gonna be used to the extract the data set from the array. Oh, sorry, okay. does it does this function does it try does it combine all these three arrays or what does it do? Yeah, it is combined to the those three yeah. as a pair in the zip function. Okay. And then it automatically try to uh try to uh, try to make a pair of the this outcome like X, Y, C. And then based on the these kind of conditions, mm. in the first case, we're gonna take the X value because if true is true, C is true, right? That is to actually take the X. If C is not true, like a force, we're gonna have a Y. So C is false, we take the Y. And then keeping as a or keeping as a this kind of a you know vector list kind of outcome. Yeah. Okay. This is also the same function. We by you instead of the using the this kind of a for loop function, there is actually a function called the where here. Oh. Okay. That means if this we have a set up the this condition like a true force, true, true force. And then we have a X array is the condition is true. And then Y, Y AR is the condition is force. This is how where function, uh, where function works. If condition is true, we take the X ARR. Condition is force, we're gonna take the Y which is the same for these two actually are the same coding. But the thing is MP where like uh, using the this uh, uh, function under the NumPy, NumPy uh, packages module gonna be much simpler to get the, yeah. this kind of a same outcome. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't, and you don't also, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah, right and also. And then, and also MP where function, you also set up the this condition outcome. And then if that's the true too, not true is the all the negative look like this based on the this array function. Right? Mm. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. And also mathematical and statistical method is also the same kind of approaches. Try to dot the mean means we're gonna try to combine all of the, these outcome to get the one single value about the mean value, okay? Same thing in here. And then a sum is the, we're gonna sum is all of the, these uh, value and then I get the sum value, right? And then uh, we actually, we can detonating about the axis, like uh, which is the with the index number, okay? That means we can actually have an array of the of the axis for the one, like a uh, axis argument to compute the statistic of the given axis resulting to the one less dimension, which is the this kind of array outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand what this means? No. So sorry. Uh, I I don't. Because because uh, in here array one axis one means the compute mean across the column, which means oh, oh, column. The column. Yeah, oh. column like this. Okay. Yeah. And then zero means the computer sum down to the row, which means this, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then a cumulative sum and cumulative prod is another aggregate, but producing the array of the intermediate result. Like if we have this kind of outcome, and then a cumulative sum is first one is a zero, second one is a zero plus one is the one. 
second third one is the zero plus one plus two is the yeah, three yeah. like yeah. a cumulative sum mm. right yeah and then when we have a, this kind of a outcome and then a cumulative sum is also the same like a zero is the low like here and then the axis one is the like this cumulative sum across the column mm. okay yeah and then uh, here is the full listing of the functions you can do. And then also the same thing for the Boolean survey, like a Boolean, if we have a uh, more than the zero and then all, all of the, those elements gonna be sum, give you about the, this kind of a uh, outcome. Okay, maybe Zero or less than less than zero and sum means we also have uh, these values, mm. non-positive values. Okay. That is quite hard. Yeah, and also in here, like a Boolean survey, any and all is also the same. This is actually the same about the any and all function in R. Okay. Yeah. When you're looking at the, this kind of a Boolean outcome, if there if any any elements has the true value, all Boolean array gonna be true. Okay, because it there is a one true elements on, on in the survey. So that means we have a true value. Anything that has the true, we have a true. All means huh. every element has the true, that actually true, but if not, it's false. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And then also sorting icon, like a sorting is the A uh, arrange dot sort is, we're gonna get the kind of a sorting outcome from the smallest to largest, yeah. right? And also, this is should be similar to uh, uh, the arrange function in R, something like this. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, R, R has yeah. an arrange function. Yeah. I think it's similar. Yeah. Yeah, and also we can also try to arranging that sorting outcome by using the row or maybe column. Right. Hmm. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And then a unique and then our set logic kind of things is just try to extract the power of the power of the array data set from the full array elements. That's the how unique or set outcome. Unique is just kind of a deleting deleting the duplicates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It is also same for the unique unique function in R. And then set logic is also the same function about the extracting the data in R. So unique function is actually kind of a, whenever you have, we have a, this kind of a duplicated, like a Joe has the duplicated and Will also duplicated and Bob also has a duplicated. We actually only get the, only get the unique value gonna be remain. Mm -hmm. Removing the old duplicates. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the how how it works, and then I set names, and then sort its outcome, etc. And then here is the function you can do. Especially unique function is the most commonly used for the, this kind of a method. And then next function, next one, like the last chapter is about the five in uh, five input and output with the array. So you can actually have uh, some of the save function, like uh, whenever you have an array. You can also save as an array name, okay? And then you can also loading that array as a MPY kind of a, uh, outcome because extension is gonna be the MP, uh, MPY. This is the actually extension. What is called the extension for NumPy array, okay? Like this. If you have a multiple arrays, you can actually have a saves in here Z 
And then that actually has extension for the MVG. And then whenever we have uh, those things, we actually have uh, this multiple array kind of be imported. This. And also 4.6 is a linear algebra, but it's uh, just kind of a simple about the basic matrices of yeah. the uh, uh, of the arrays. So I'm gonna try to keep looking at the, this one like a uh, in here at the uh, at the bottom like a diagnosis. If he sees the this one, yeah, the value know. extract the this value, mm -hmm. and then dot trace or maybe solve those things and eigenvalues. E the all of the these are the kind of a value for the how we can try to do the algebra by using the those matrices, okay? And then the 4.7 is just kind of an example about the random works kind of functions to the starting from zero to the step one or negative one according to the equal probability. And then these are the kind of uh, some of the noises outcomes. And then uh, we can try to keep randomize uh, these kind of outcome and then uh, max and minimum work and then uh, things like a uh, positive saying? when we get the random number for the positive value we have a one step forward we have a negative value we have a negative one like a one step backward like that and then keep trying to doing that and then accumulating those kind of a sum of outcome and then uh, those things are uh, is the how we can try to do the this kind of a graph gonna be show up and then this is a just kind of a simple example about the how we can try to using the keep the array by using the array outcome and then how we can keep the record or programming for the for the calculating something using the array. So I think that this is it. And then uh, do you have any questions so far? Anything? No, I think it's it's quite good. The, the chapter is long, but the explanations were very clear. Yeah. You know, thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right. So I think that this is the this is the end of the today's uh this is gonna be the end.